I've been avoiding this camera for over eight years. You see, eight years ago, I was 18 years old. I wasn't making much money at all. And as much as I wanted a Fuji X70, I just could never afford one. Fast forward to the present day, and even though I could technically afford it, I still have never picked one up. But that changes today. Ooh, okay. My friend Tony let me borrow his for a week, and after shooting with it for a while, it was very clear to me. I was right about the Fuji X70. And you know, I never thought I'd ever come on here to say this, but the Fuji X70 is... Okay, so with the X70, one thing that's actually kind of cool is that flip out tilt screen. I think it comes in really handy. I don't know many point and shoots that have that little flip up tilt screen. Like the GR doesn't have it. None of the GRs have it actually. So as nifty as this seems, even though it's not technically like a vlog camera, if you were to use this for something like, let's just say for example, like you wanted to take a selfie or whatnot, that actually would be pretty cool. But other than that, it actually does make shooting from the hip a little bit easier, just a little bit. All right, so the sun is setting in about, I'm probably say 20 minutes. I'm headed up to the cliff house, which is gonna be just up here because there's a giant shipping container and I try to get there before the sun sets. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Nice Love your meet content, you. man. Thank you, brother, I appreciate it. What you got on there? Ooh, spot Matt. Hey man, happy new year, brother. Happy new year. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so there's some pretty cool shadows going on right here. I might just wait for it, wait for something to hit. Actually, the shadows are actually really nice right here. Let's do that, let's focus on that. So for some reason, the autofocus won't focus on this highlight here in the background. I'm trying to get some like cool shadows with the birds as well, get some nice texture going, but for some reason, man, it is not going. Oh, it's pretty on this side too now. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start shooting this way just to see what is going on. Oh, look who it is, look who we got. What's up, y'all? How you doing? What's going on, bro? How's it going? Tristan, 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 I'm Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, I nice know you are. <laughs> 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 what you guys up to? Just shoot? Just shoot. We got a bunch of people yeah, here. Dude, I know. Whoa. You? How you doing? Tristan, Tristan, Tristan. Happy New Year's, man. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't think it has yeah, it. It doesn't bro. have it. <laughs> okay, never mind. We found it. Look at perfect Eli human knows. being right yeah, here. Eli knows. Eli knows. Literally. Literally. So we are in Japan town. We just had dinner, but I'm with my beautiful girlfriend, Mai. Mai, say hi. <laughs> and she's looking really gorgeous tonight, so I wanted to take a few photographs of her. And uh, yeah, see if the Fuji X70 can handle all of this beauty right here, all of it in one setting. a lot to say about the Fujifilm X70. A lot of it is good and honestly a lot of it is also bad. And pretty much at the very end of this episode I kind of want to wrap it up and tell you guys if it's worth picking up in 2024. At the start of the new year uh, you know the X70 is still one of those options that people talk about and I really want to give you my unbiased opinion on this camera despite the hype and you know just how much people rave about how great the camera is. But before we jump into that you guys, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. All right you guys, so it is now 2024, a brand new year. Easily one of the best ways to get started in the new year as a photographer is to create your own professional online website. This not only lets you separate yourself from other photographers but also also lets you get ahead because you can create pages for a portfolio, a gallery, you can even have space for e-commerce shop, and one of my newest favorite features, the videos page. The video page allows you to share your video content directly on your website through an upload or any URL link, which is amazing if you do anything like myself with hybrid content, both video and photography. So if you wanna get ahead this new year, I recommend you create your own website with Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes or enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Whew, okay, the Fujifilm X7, you guys. First and foremost, you guys, I'm, I'm a little torn because there was so much hype around the X7, all the different videos that I've seen online. You know, even my friend that I borrowed the camera from told me, it's probably one of the best cameras you're gonna be able to shoot with, bro. You need to get your hands on one. And as much as I wanted to be skeptical about it, and I'm still skeptical about it even till now, ah, I hate to say it, but the X70 is actually really freaking cool. It's a really capable camera. Now I'm not gonna get too technical with this overview because I don't think I spent enough time with the camera to give you guys a full rundown on it. But in my opinion, just from the month of me shooting with it, the Fujifilm X70 is probably one of those cameras that won't age over time. It's like the Ricoh GR2. Even in you know 2023, 2024, the GR2 is still a great option being that it is a 16 megapixel camera. Now, if you're looking for a street photography camera, a pocket camera, something that you could take with you as like a main kind of setup. It has all the features that you could ever want. If you look at the lens, it's extremely small. This is a small pancake lens, and this is a pretty compact setup. It is a little bit bigger than the GR3 and the GR2. It's taller, it's thicker as well, but I think that helps with the grip overall. The X70 has a 28 millimeter focal length equivalent lens, which is really great for street photography. I think 28 millimeter is one of the premier focal lengths when it comes to street photography. Most people will shoot a 35 or a 28. Now being it is max 2.8 aperture, it's not the fastest thing in the world and so if you're going to be shooting in low light, you are going to need to bump up the ISO a little bit. Speaking of ISO performance, I did a couple of low light tests with it, shooting at 3200 ISO and it's pretty much what I expected, very similar to like my Fuji X-E1. At 3200 ISO it's still usable but you can definitely see the noise in the kind of shadow areas uh, and so you know, you might need to play around with that a little bit. It might just look better in 1600 ISO, maybe even on a tripod with a slower shutter speed, but come on, if you're shooting an X70, most likely you're doing everything handheld. But where I feel like the Fujifilm X70 excels in terms of street photography is the ergonomics and placements 
of all of the different settings. And I say that because there's a lot of things on this camera that just make sense. First things first, the aperture. The aperture is on top. It's controlled by these two tabs on the side, which flick left to right. You have 2.8 to F16 as well as auto. That's really quick and easy. And you know, if you've shot 35 millimeter film cameras in the past, you should know that that's always gonna be right there. Secondly, you have that focus ring. Now, believe it or not, you could shoot the X70 in manual focus, which is actually something I did. And it's also one of the negatives. I'm gonna talk about that here in a second, but the focus ring is right above that aperture tab and uh, it does feel a little bit cheap. On the top you have that shutter speed dial which is great because it goes up to one four thousandths of a second. Really really useful in very very sunny conditions. You also have an auto mode which is pretty cool. You can flip it on to auto really quick. Uh, you have a couple of different function buttons, drive setting, shutter button on top which is really nice because it's this nice flat feeling surface and feels really good to click on. And then you have the back of the camera. Now the back of the camera is fairly interesting. I think one thing that I really, really like about this camera, of course, is going to be that flip out screen. Uh, when you're shooting street photography, if you go low, like, you know, you bring the camera down low, you can't really see the screen. You have to take the photograph, shoot from the hip, bring it back to your face and check. But with the X70, it has a tilt up screen. It almost looks like a vlog camera. I think this is really cool because if you're doing things like travel and vacation photography and you're with your family and you're in a pinch, you want to make a cool photograph, I see no problem with you taking this 28 millimeter lens and taking a picture like this. I actually took a photo with some of the guys that we saw and met out in um, San Francisco, but I think this is really useful if you are gonna be shooting things from the hip. Now, everything else from the internals and whatnot is everything you would expect from another Fujifilm camera. It doesn't have like all the newer film simulations like they would in the X-Pro3 or the X-T5, but it does have your basic set like classic Chrome, Astia, all that good stuff. But there are a number of things that make me really, really kind of push back against the X70, actually more than I expected. And I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I don't think this is worth the $700 that it's asking for right now. <sighs> it hurts to say because this is probably the first negative review I've had on a Fujifilm camera ever. Everything I've ever tried, I felt like it was good value. But the X70 is going for anywhere between like six, $700, even upwards towards like 1100 bucks. And you have to consider that this is an older Fujifilm camera. It's 16.3 megapixels. Sure, it performs really well. The colors from this are gonna look great. You know, as you guys seen in the video, there's no question about the performance, the color science, uh, maybe some of the performance is still pretty good, but come on, it's $700, 16.3 megapixels, and just straight up, the autofocus isn't that great to me. There were a lot of times where I found myself hunting and just, you know, trying to half press that shutter button, especially in very contrasty scenes. You know, really, really played around with it because I said, maybe this is situational. Maybe it's just, you know, too contrasty where I'm trying to take pictures of. But while I was out on the coast, I switched it from pinpoint autofocus to zone, you know, try to get a wide area, and it still wasn't catching focus properly. And that was shooting at like F5.6 and F8. That that to me kind of annoyed me because I had to switch it over into manual focus and you know sit there with this tiny manual focus ring and you know try to focus the camera. I'm not impressed with the Fujifilm X70's autofocus and overall I think that's what leads me into you know not really feeling like maybe it's not worth it in 2024. I feel like there's other cameras that you can get for that same price that allow you to maybe change your lens out, that have better battery life. If you want to pay even a fraction of that cost and have something similar, I mean, you can always pick up something like the Fuji X-E1. And this is the Fujifilm X-E1 right here. It's a little bit bigger. This is a larger lens, it's the 23F2, but you can get a small 27 millimeter lens that cuts it off basically right here. If size is an issue for you, I mean, I don't think the X70 is a bad camera at all. Like I said, I'm actually impressed with the performance. I think the images are sharp, the colors look great. Uh, the overall ergonomics of the camera just makes sense. But in terms of value for money, I think what really kind of puts me off, it, it really is just the price tag. And if this camera was maybe like 400 bucks, maybe 500 max, I think I could justify that. And I know this might be controversial. Maybe the X70 isn't the best value for your money. I would look otherwise. I would look into the GRs. I would look into some of the other Fuji cameras like the X-E2, the X-Pro2. You can get an X-Pro2 for the same price as this thing right here. I don't know, man. Maybe it just it's just the price for me, but... That's just my take on the Fujifilm X70. That's gonna wrap it up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know your comments down below. You know, do you think the Fujifilm X70 is worth it in 2024? Would you pay the seven to $800 price tag for it? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. So thank you guys for wrapping it up, man. And here's to another year of creating 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Subscribe for more Fujifilm content. As always, this has been King Japes, Minolta Gang.